Hi there, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create some sci-fi UI sound effects all inside of Vital. So we're gonna start off with some really simple sounds, really basic sounds, and then we're gonna add on a bit more complexity, a bit more effects as we go along to, until we create a bit more complex sounds. With that said, if at any point in the video you wanna skip ahead to different types of sounds, I'll make sure to have chapters below. So if there's any kind of specific sound that you wanna learn how to create, you can just skip ahead to that if you're interested. All right, with that said, let's get right into Reaper, right into our project and get started. All right, so here we are inside of Reaper and I've loaded up a new instance of Vital here. And what we're gonna do to start is, the first thing I like to do personally is I like to turn on the 3D map here so I can see the wavetable a little bit better, see what we're doing. And here I'm gonna go into here into my DDA core pack. By the way, this is a completely free wavetable pack that I created. There's almost 500 wavetables in here. And I'll make sure I have a link in the description below if you're interested in getting it. But basically I created this because um, the, basic libraries of wavetable content that comes with Vital, there's really not that much. And I really want to be able to create a, a wider palette, give, give people a bit more to work with as they're starting out with Vital. So if you're interested, I'll make sure to have a link, like I said, in the description below, if you want to grab those again for free. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go into my basic tables here and I'm going to have my sign to saw. And as you can see, it's just a basic wavetable that we're going to start off with. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to reduce the sustain. This is going to be our sustain envelope. So if we play a sound right now, Right, that's the sound, it's just a plain sine wave, nothing special. I'm gonna reduce the decay a little bit, maybe bring down the uh, curve here. That sounds good. Now what's special about Vital is that it has a lot of spectral effects, uh, which you can find right here in this little drop down menu. And the one that I really like for um, these kind of sci-fi kind of futuristic sounds is the random amplitude uh, module here. And what I'm gonna do is, I mean, you could just kind of scan through here. You could just use that and that those could be like awesome sounds, tonal sounds for little bleeps and bops and whatever else you're creating. So that's great. If you want to make them a little bit more interesting, I like to uh, apply my envelope here onto the uh, random amplitude here. So now it just makes it a little bit more special. It adds a little bit more movement. So it makes it more interesting. What's also great about this specific uh, spectral effect here is that you can randomize it so that you're gonna get different results every time. So. And if you wanna, you know, add a bit more space, you can add a bit of reverb here. All right, but that's our first sound. All right, so keeping on going with what we have here, the next thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add oscillator two here. And inside of the second uh, drop down menu of effects here, I'm gonna go all the way down to FM, oscillator one. So this is gonna apply uh, FM synthesis to this first oscillator here. So again, I'm just gonna look at my 3D envelope. I like to see it. I'm gonna choose a new wavetable here inside of my pack. And I'm gonna turn this all the way up so it's 100% affecting the sound. And you can already hear what we're, we're getting some results here. I'm gonna bring up the pitch and I'm gonna bring this all the way to the end here. Right, so you can get some cool sounds that way. I'm gonna turn this down. Maybe reduce the modulation. Right, you can get some cool sounds that way. I'm just gonna turn this off here. Bring, down, bring back the attack to zero. And let's see what kind of sounds we can create with our special effects now. All right, so just scanning through here, I can already get some cool sound. All right, so there you go. So with that, I know I can kind of keep playing around here. I can keep going through here and choosing different effects, but I can already get some nice, really tinny bell sounds or like like positive, whatever, button sounds if I'm playing higher up in, in on my keyboard. And if I play lower down, I can get some a nice like um, alarm sounds or cancel button sounds or something like that. Now, if we wanted to keep going with this kind of technique here, I could do the same thing here again with oscillator three. So I'm just gonna pick another wavetable here. 
maybe pick a little location here. And I can, again, assign this as FM synthesis to oscillator one. So it's just adding more to that first uh, uh, oscillator. Maybe I can pitch it down. But you get the idea. You can basically keep going this way and get more out of it like this. All right, so let's keep going here with a more, a bit more of a complex sound. So here you can see I have the pretty much the same setup as I had before with my FM synthesis modulating the sounds, the first oscillator up here. I just changed up the, uh, the different wavetables here. So this is the sound I have. Doesn't really matter what sound you're starting off with, uh, but that's what I'm gonna do for now. So what I'm gonna do here is for LFO one, I'm gonna bring this all the way to the right here. So just, we, we, we have a ramp up. I'm gonna go to seconds here and I wanna bring this down. So it's kind of quick. We can kind of tweak this in a little bit more as we go here, but what we're gonna assign this to is gonna be the pitch. And I'm gonna assign it, I'm gonna go to enter value because I want there to be only, uh, to be 12. So basically one octave, that's all I want. And on here, right underneath the pitch here, you can click on this little section. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click on the first uh, note. And what this, this is gonna do is basically it's going to create this ar ar arpeggiation basically. So if we have a listen. Right, so you can hear it, it's hitting that lower note and then that higher one right after. If I wanna be more complex, I can add like maybe two notes here. Right, so you can hear that there. Now I found the attack a little bit harsh here, so I'm just gonna see if I can clean it up a little bit. All right, so here I changed a few settings. One is I put a, the RM for oscillator two. So the, basically this oscillator is affecting oscillator two here and oscillator two here is affecting oscillator one. And I'm doing again here RM for oscillator one. And then here all I did is I changed a new uh, sound file, a new wavetable. And then if you, if you change up the random amplitude, it can really drastically change your sound. So you kind of have to play around with this a little bit, but you can get some cool sounds out of it. You can change the speed here. And here I'll also change it to envelope, so it just plays once. Right, you can get some cool sounds that way. I also did a similar thing with this patch over here. Here you can see I just had a longer decay, so maybe if I add a bit more decay here on this one. Maybe I can, again, assign this to the amplitude. Maybe try some other wavetables. All right, so combining all of the different effects that we've talked about so far, where we play around with the random amplitude here, randomize that, assign the envelope here to the random amplitude here, so it modulates it. And then we're doing RM synthesis or FF synthesis. You can try both. I find RM synthesis is, you can get some better effects because if you do too much FM, you can get kind of too much into the noise category of sounds. It can get pretty noisy. So RM is pretty good, right? So assigning this one to the oscillator one, this one to oscillator two. So they're kind of all affecting the sound here. And of course, lastly, is assigning this LFO one here to the pitch here and assigning the pitch snap, transpose snap here so that we get this octave. So we get multiple notes playing at the same time. And it, like I said, you can play around with this, do multiple notes if you want. Right, and try out different speeds. Right, and with that, you can get some pretty cool bleeps, blops, and, and a whole bunch of different sounds that you can create in the sci-fi category. All right, so here's another example of a patch I created just to show you another example here. You can see here I, I uh, really brought down the, the sustain, brought down the decay, kind of tweaked it in, but it's basically the same kind of pattern. And then here I, I brought the LFO one here, assigned it to the pitch, one octave. Uh, here I have the pitch nav, just one note. And then I have a different LFO here. And so instead of having 
just a triangle up and down here. I just have these little pulse series and you can find these in your search field here. They just comes with the library. And this I assigned to uh, both the ramp amplitude. And I think I also assigned it to this secondary effects table if I wanted to, but I, ha didn't, I haven't assigned it yet. I haven't put it on another effect, but if I wanted to, right, you can get other sounds. All right, but you get the idea, similar techniques. All right, so let's move on to a different type of sound effect that we can create here. So these types of sound effects that we're gonna create are gonna be scanners or like these higher technology, I don't know, scanning devices or something like that. So that's what we're gonna do here. So again, I'm gonna start here, 3D map. I'm gonna go into here, my DDA core pack. I'm gonna choose a sound effect or a wavetable, sorry. I'm just gonna go for analog two. All right, and the first thing we're gonna do here is I'm gonna go into our LFO uh, shapes here. I'm gonna choose staircase down. And this we are gonna assign to our pitch. All right, so it sounds good. I'm just gonna wanna increase the speed quite a bit here. So I'm gonna bring this to seconds. I'm gonna bring it faster. So that's better, it's a lot closer. Um, I'm gonna do random amplitudes again. I really like this one. Maybe make it a little bit faster even. Maybe I can smooth it a little bit. All right, so that way it's not so clicky, it's not so harsh, you get, it's kind of a nice rounded sound. Maybe I'll try to see if we can add some unison. I'm pretty happy with that. It's a pretty basic sound. It can work though, depending on the use case. Of course, you can add some other effects. Usually something like a flanger or phaser will be pretty good here. All right, so that's already pretty good to me. All right, let's try to take it a step further here. I'm gonna assign it to the random amplitude. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that. Let's try a different type of sound here. So I'm gonna go back into our LFO shapes here and I'm gonna choose a different one. I'm gonna choose growing oscillator. I'm gonna bring the speed to make it a bit slower here and let's see what we have now. I'm gonna turn this off. So that's kind of cool. Let's make it a little faster. And maybe I wanna try it with a different effect here, different spectral effect. Maybe a bit faster. Right and right there you can see, you, can, you get that kind of classic, you know, scanning or something sound. Let's add that effect. Oh, I still have. Let's increase the mix of our phaser here just to make it a bit more apparent. You can even add unison here. All right, so let's add our second oscillator here. I'm going to sign FM, FM8. That's the one I'm choosing here. And I'm just putting on RM oscillator one. I'm pretty sure this stands for ring modulation, by the way. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. So I'm doing the wave morphing to 100% uh, to, to oscillator one up here. And let's have a listen to what we have. All right, so very different than this. All right, so I can bring this oscillator in and out if I wanted to. Maybe I can just go like this, and this could be a cool sound effect right here. Maybe you slow it down a bit. Another thing I could do is maybe with a different oscillator here, I can assign this to the actual wavetable here so it scans through it. So again, I'm gonna slow this down here. All 
right? So you can get a lot of cool sounds and textures out of it just by playing around with these different wavetables, the different um, ring modulation assignments here, the level, and I could even go in here and probably assign some cool spectral effect here. Let's see. Yeah, it just sounds a bit different. So again, play around with that and, and you can get a lot of cool sounds out of it. All right, so I've initiated our instance of Vital again. I wanna do something uh, a little bit different, a, a new kind of scanner type of sound. So I'm gonna go back into our uh, DDA core pack here. I'm gonna choose an analog sound. I have one picked out already, it's my number five here. And I'm just gonna put it around here. Again, random amplitude, let's randomize it a little bit. Sounds good to me. Here inside of my LFO, Shapes, I'm gonna choose random pulses. So you'll see what it looks like. It looks like this. And again, I'm gonna apply this to our pitch again. And through seconds. Okay, so you can get a different style of scanner or technology sound here. Smooth it out a bit. I can go with my effects here, add a filter just to really cut out some of the low end. Maybe even some of the high end actually. All right, so let's do an, uh, one more scanner sound effect. I'm gonna show you a little bit different version, if you will. Um, okay, so I'm gonna do a similar thing as I did before, so I'm gonna move a little bit quick, quickly here. I'm gonna start with the staircase down. I'm gonna assign this to our pitch. We're gonna do an octave. I'm gonna do that's a bit different. I'm gonna assign the mod wheel to the pitch up here, like that. And I'm gonna assign this LFO one here to our uh, spectral sound effects. I'm gonna do it to harmonic stretch to start here. And I'm gonna just choose a some sort of wavetable here. Let's see what we can get. Two seconds. All right, already you can hear, you can see we're getting a lot of really cool sounds here just by signing this LFO that's being assigned to the pitch as well to the spectral sound. I'm gonna add a few effects here like multiband compression, that phaser again. Maybe a touch of distortion. Now, like I said before, what's different here is I'm assigning the mod wheel here to our pitch. So what I can do now is with my mod wheel, I can control the scanner sound. Right, so I can pretty much dial in the exact kind of sound effect that I want. So for this technique, the harmonic, harmonic stretch and the inharmonic stretch works really well here. So try out both of these. All right, let's move on to a different category of sounds here. These are gonna be like more sustained or longer uh, sounds. So let's start with the first one here. So I'm just gonna load a new instance of Vital here so we can start from scratch. Here we go, again, 3D map. I wanna see it on here. All right, we're gonna start off simple. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna assign a random LFO this time, so we haven't touched this yet, but I'm gonna assign this to our spectral effects, and I'm gonna scan, scan through and see what kind of spectral effects will work well with this. So I'm gonna look in our DDA core pack again. Let's see if we can get something a bit different. Uh, maybe some sawtooth stuff. Might be a little bit harsh, but let's try it. So I'm gonna change the speed here. I want it to be quite a bit slower. 
I think I'm going to go straight to my random amplifier, random amplitude here. Because I can get some cool sounds right away out of this. Again, just add a reverb. You can even slow this down quite a bit more and you have yourself a nice sci-fi sound. Maybe I'll try something that's more friendly, like a sine wave or something. Now put on a filter here so we don't kill our ears. <laughs> So this can be good for like different kind of ambient sounds or just, just additional sounds you can put in ambiences and stuff like that or computer rooms or something like that. All right, so that's our first sound. Let's go to our next type of sound here. It's going to be transitions. So I'm going to start off with a new instance here. I'm going to go into, again, my DA core pack. I'm going to choose from my growls this time. I'm going to go to growl number six, turn on my 3D map. And here what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the attack a little bit. And let's see what we have. Maybe probably increase the release as well. I'm going to assign LFO one here to uh, the first envelope. I'm going to change it to seconds so I can control the time in seconds here. I want it to be quite a bit slower, even slower. All right, so with just this technique here, you can get some pretty cool sounds. Basically, you want to slow down your LFO uh, quite a lot and then just assign it to scan through wavetables. And when you have really spectral wavetables like this one, you can get some really cool, cool and gritty sounds, especially as you start pitch shifting stuff down. So if I bring it down like an octave here. Right, you can get some cool sounds. Now, if I just want to add some extra spectral effects here like we've done before. Maybe even a bit of unison. Right, and just like that, you can get these nice little transition sounds. And of course, you want to change it up, try a different patch. Just try a different wavetable. Maybe uh, bring the attack up a little bit and the release down. You can also change the speed here a little bit. Random amplitude. All right, so these are great for transitions. It could even be for like uh, text, like doors, doors closing, doors opening, things of that nature. So yeah, these kind of transition sounds are great for that. All right, let's have a go at doing another one here. So I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna go to my spectral sounds. I'm gonna just choose number six. Gonna change the random amplitude here a little bit, bring that down. So that sounds pretty good. I'm gonna bring this up an octave. So that's pretty good. Again, here, I'm just gonna add a few effects like a multiband compressor, a reverb, and maybe even a filter. Maybe I can choose a different kind of effect here, like a comb filter or something like that. Let's see what we can do with that.
and you can get a lot of cool sounds depending on the, again, wavetable, random amplitude, same same kind of technique. Another thing you can do here is just uh, do a ramp. I mean, I guess you can keep it as a triangle or ramp, doesn't really matter, but assign this to, again, the ramp, random amplitude here. You can get some even more out of it. All right, let's move on to a different type of sci-fi sound here. These are gonna be our power-ups. So these are relatively simple. So I'm gonna, again, start here, 3D map. I'm gonna um, choose a pack here. I think I'm gonna choose a growl or a spectral growl maybe. And I'm gonna sign our first LFO here to this one, it scans through it. So if we play it, it sounds like this. <laughs> I'm going to slow it down. I think I might just do an envelope here just so it goes through it once. All right, so that's cool. That's, that sounds good. Um, next thing I'm going to do here is with this second envelope here, I'm going to bring it all the way up so it's just a ramp. Again, seconds. And I'm going to assign this to our pitch. And basically, it's just going to make it go up. <laughs> All right, so that's it so far. Kind of basic, kind of simple. I mean, it works depending on the situation, um, but let's see if we can make it a bit more interesting. So I'm gonna add LFO number two here, and I'm gonna assign our LFO here to uh, do a ring modulation to the oscillator number one. We're gonna bring it all the way up. And actually, I wanna start off with a sine wave. I don't wanna make it too complex just yet. So I'm just gonna do a sine wave here. And if I ever wanna change it, I can uh, scan through it and, and change it up. So let's have a listen right now. <laughs> So that's cool. Maybe I want a, this to keep going. So. so this one I want to be an envelope because it's just going up. And once it reaches the top, I want to stop. So this is affecting our pitch. This one is affecting just the scanning of the wave. Right, so it sounds kind of cool. Maybe I want to change it up. So what I could do here is I maybe assign the alpha number two here, which is affecting our pitch. I'm going to assign it to this second oscillator here, just so it goes changes a little bit. So I just wanted to scan through the file just a little bit. Maybe I can apply some effects here. Let's make it a little bit faster. So with the second LFO here, I'm going to assign it to this um, spectral effect. Can add some effects here, multiband compression, maybe a bit of reverb. All right, and with that, we've really transformed our sound and made it a lot more interesting, a lot, yeah, with a lot more movement and interest in the sound. So you could keep going here. You could add oscillator three like we did um, when we were doing our short beeps and, and, and blips types of sounds. You could do that here to assign it to um, RM the top there, but I'm going to stop here for now because I think that's pretty good. So let's move on to our final sound types of sound. These are going to be alarms. So let's start with a brand new instance of Vital here. I'm going to load it up here. Perfect. Now, the first thing I'm going to do here is I want a square table here, a square LFO to assign to our gain here, to our sound. So I'm going to assign this to the level here. I'm going to bring this all the way down and let's increase it. So it goes about there. So if you play it now, all right, you have the, you have the envelope of an alarm sound. You can already hear it there. It's, it works, but it's pretty plain, pretty boring. So let's make it a bit more interesting here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to choose a different effect. Let's see this one. All right, so that's good to start. Next, I'm going to choose oscillator number two here, and I'm going to do a th assign it here to oscillator number one as FM synthesis. So let's put that there. So this is okay, but you can already probably hear the issue is that this oscillator keeps on playing, even though this one, the level is at zero. So you can still hear this one. It kind of sounds funny. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring the level all the way down to zero with the second oscillator here. I'm going to sign this to the level here. Let's do it seconds here. Let's also do this one in seconds. 
And what I'm going to do here with my, let's assign it with my mod wheel. I'm going to assign it to LFO number one, the speed of LFO number two and LFO number one. So I can change it on the fly. So if I want it to play a bit faster or slower, I can do that. So I'm going to change here the speed. I'm going to enter a value, probably like two seconds. I'm going to do the exact same value here for the second LFO, two seconds. Okay, so now this is what we have. All right, and with that, we have our basic shape, our basic sound for an alarm. All right, so let's make a new alarm sound here from scratch. So I'm gonna go here and choose growl. I'm gonna do number 13. And we're gonna do a similar thing as we did before. I'm gonna go into here and we're gonna choose our square LFO. This is gonna be assigned to the level here. So I'm gonna bring that down all the way to zero. And basically the LFO is gonna control the volume. Do it in seconds. That is okay. Now, next thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna want a second LFO. This time I want it to be a ramp up in seconds here. And I'm gonna assign this to scan through here. Right, so instead of having just a plain sound like that, we have a bit more movement. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna turn on the second oscillator. I'm gonna go here, choose another growl wavetable. I'm gonna do number 16 here. I'm gonna close that. And this one is gonna be uh, ring modulating uh, RM affecting oscillator number one. I'm gonna put it all the way to 100. This one, I'm gonna bring down the pitch by two octaves. That sounds okay, but again, I want the the level to come in and out with the first one. So if I'm just going to sign it with uh, modulator two here. Right, sounds a little bit better. I'm just going to balance out the volume between the two. And the last part here is I want this to scan through this file. And lastly here, I'm just gonna add a bit of a reverb. Maybe some compression. And there you go, you have a quite a bit more of a complex sound. You have these two wavetables kind of interchanging, coming in and out of each other. This one's uh, affecting the first oscillator, but it's also, I'm not putting it completely to 100 so that it can still hold on its own. So if I take it off, you still hear it. And here, if we want to affect this speed, I'm going to uh, take macro one, assign it to our the speed of LFO one, and then macro one again, speed of LFO two. Both of these, LFO one and two, are going to be assigned that speed. So now I can control the speed of both together here. So I can control the speed of the alarm. All right, another thing you can do if you want to change up your sound even more is taking LFO number two here, which is affecting our... Um, our, our volume here. I'm going to sign this. Actually, I've already signed it to the pitch here. And you can see here, I've already entered 24. So it's going to be two octaves. And I did that for oscillator one and two. So now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to enter uh, one seconds for both of these. I want to slow them down a little bit just so we can really hear what's happening here. And now if we want to speed it up, we can speed it up. Bring this down two octaves. So I'm gonna bring it down one. All right, and that's how you can create even more complex alarm sounds with even more movement. All right, so I hope you found that useful and valuable. And just a reminder to grab that wavetable 
pack if you haven't already. It's absolutely free. I'll have a link in the description below. And if you have any comments, questions, leave it down below as well. I always read them, even though I don't always get around to answering them. I do read them, uh, and I will do my best to answer them if I have time and when I have time. So I think that's it for now. Thanks for watching all the way through to the end. If you want to see another video where I create more sci-fi sounds, sci-fi UI sounds, I did a whole tutorial where I did that inside of Faceplant. So I'll put it up on the screen right now. And that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.